My name is Joe Owen. I live, breathe and teach leadership skills. In this programme, I'm going to meet a deputy head considering headship, but reluctant to take the final step. The question is, could she really do it? To find out, I'm going to throw her to a panel of education experts who will ultimately decide, does she have what it takes to be a head? In preparation for the big day, I'm going to shadow her to examine her leadership skills. I'll analyse her drive and motivation and then I'm going to send her to a leader outside of education to help her find out what it takes to be at the top of your game. Will she then be ready for headship? Only the panel can decide. Tracy Hemming has been teaching for 13 years and has been deputy head at Knights Templar Secondary School in rural Hertfordshire for the past two years. With two weeks before she meets my panel of experts, I've come to identify exactly what's holding Tracy back. Is it her skill or is it her will? Hi. Tracy Hemming, nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Okay, come this way please. Thank you very much. Before my examination begins, I need to get to the crux of Trace's situation. So what's holding you back at the moment? The interview process is a quite a daunting one and it's also the idea that I need to think carefully about when I'm ready to make the full commitment to being a head teacher. Shadowing Trace's busy schedule should give me the insight I need. Everyone's ties all done up, top buttons done up. That's super. Tracy evidently enjoys being in the classroom. I'm wondering whether a love of teaching is also preventing her from taking the next step. Bit of a confusing one, this one, actually. Right, thanks. The question is, what's holding her back? I need to speak to some of her colleagues. A lot of me feels that she would actually hold back from becoming a head because it would take her away from the classroom, which is where she loves to be. She seems to have it all. Do you think she has it all? I've got no doubt at all that Tracy will be a head and that she'll be a very good head. I think it's a matter of finding the right school and the right time. Just wanted to give everyone an update with the festival week. What we've done so far... It's the end of the day and Tracy is chairing a senior management meeting about an upcoming event. Watching her at work, I'm wondering what's stopping her from taking the next step. Is it a love of teaching or is it something else? I need to get to the bottom of her hesitation. You've got a lot of the right skills and experience. Your colleagues recognise you've got a lot of the right skills and experience. So when are you getting the application in? <laughs> hmm. I don't know, I've still got to be convinced. You can't be perfect, you can't be all things to all men, but you, know, you still are responsible for all of it. You're still accountable for all of it. And that's something that makes you think twice. Is it fear that's holding you back? Well, what, what do you do? What do you do if you go in and you fail as a head? You know... It's... Do you think you would fail? No, but what if I did? Why don't we look at a, another head teacher talking about what it takes to be a head teacher? No head teacher is perfect and no head teacher is so rounded that they can perform all the facets of headship as brilliantly as all the others. And I think that's about recognising what your strengths are and ensuring that within your team there are people who can plug those gaps. Yeah, I couldn't agree with that more. Yes, that's um, exactly how I, how I see things. So how do you see the pros and cons of that step up to headship? I think possibly a headship is not, it's not like any other, any other role. You've got to be 100% sure that that's the right time. It's a huge amount of commitment. Um, and it's not something that I don't want to do. It's just something that I've got to really feel ready for. Trace's challenge is confidence. It's time for her to visit her leader outside education to find out what it really takes to succeed and then she can decide, is she up for it or not? With just one week to go before she faces the panel, I'm sending Tracy to spend a day with Jeanette Fairty, Chief Executive of a major recruitment and training company. I'm hoping that a day spent with Jeanette will help Tracy discover that she has got what it takes. 
We've drawn up a, a plan, Jam. I'm feeling a bit nervous. I'm not quite sure what to expect today, um, but I'm very much looking forward to meeting Jeanette. Good morning, Tracy. With over 20 years of business experience, she manages 45 job centres and over 600 members of staff. As a strong female role model, I think Jeanette could be just the sounding board Tracy is looking for. I think that I've learnt a lot of lessons in business and one of those lessons is that you cannot stand still, that life is constantly changing and evolving. I think you can fall into a trap of not understanding what your own strengths and weaknesses are, but more commonly you can fall into the trap of underestimating your strengths. Did you have to take a lot of risks to get where you are today? The answer to that is obviously yes. If you don't take risks, you don't learn anything. And there's a favourite expression I have, which is people who don't take risks don't drink champagne. <laughs> Jeanette takes Tracy to visit one of her employment and training centres in Stratford, East London. The centre provides support for new business as well as for people looking for work. This is a great chance for Tracy to witness Jeanette's hands-on approach in action. So what are you calling your business? Well, freestyle spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Building confidence in job seekers is central to the centre's work and a session on interview techniques is the perfect opportunity for Tracy to pick up some tips. So really you're talking about selling yourself. So what are the three main things that you need to research? After a few years, you can step up and up. Do, yeah, definitely. It's the end of Trace's visit and a last opportunity for Jeanette to impart some all-important business expertise. You have a hands-on approach in a way that means that you, you understand exactly what's going on in your business, but you empower people within their own areas to get on and do it. You trust them. I think that's um, particularly useful when I think about the areas that I've got reservations about with moving mm. forward into headship. What sort of areas are those? It was trying to be all things to all men. I find it difficult to think how you're going to do that, but watching you today shows that yes, you can do it. In terms of thinking about yourself as a head, I pick up that you're a bit reluctant, um, that you're perhaps worried about the risk of failure. Would that, would that be true? Yeah, I think that is true. I think I'm driven by a fear of failure rather than a, a wish for success. I think it's, it's a psychological barrier to get through because I think, you know, you've got tremendous skills. I've seen that today and, I, you know, I've been very impressed. So I, I really would want to see you go forward myself. OK, well, thank you very much for that vote of confidence, but you're absolutely right. I really think Tracy is ready to take the next step into headship. She's really impressed me today. She's got a big range of skills. She's, and what's more important, she's absolutely natural with people. Hey, well, thank you, Jen. Welcome. Bye-bye. Okay. Today, I have um, definitely been inspired. Uh, I've got an awful lot to think about. Jeanette's made me think about myself and about my future um, more than I had done before, in a different way. spent time with Tracy, I've sent her to a leader in a professional services firm and now I've put together a panel of experts to see how far she's progressed on her journey to headship. Tracy obviously has the skills to make it to the top job in education, but can she show she has the confidence? My carefully selected panel of education experts from governing bodies, industry recruitment and outstanding schools are going to find out. This is Tracy's moment of truth. My selection panel is next door and I'm going to watch her from in here. What I want to see is can she project the confidence as well as the competence that a head teacher needs. Let's see how she does. Thank you for coming this morning. Um, we've got a number of questions to ask you, which we'll all take turns to do. Could you describe your vision for whole school improvement? My vision starts in the classroom, and it starts in an outstanding classroom. 
And I think what happens when you become a head teacher is that the school becomes your classroom. And those guidelines for an outstanding lesson or an outstanding classroom should be your guidelines in running a school. Just breathing from up here, very nervous. Do you want to be ahead? Why do you want to be ahead? When I started this process, I wasn't sure. I love being in the classroom, I still do. But now I think, I've convinced myself that yes, I do want to be a head teacher. Are you resilient to cope with sometimes failure? Yes. I thought, I have thought about that, the other side of headship, because that's the bit that does, that did certainly put me off. You don't really go forward unless you take risks. Um, and I'm a little bit more realistic about that now. How do you intend on involving students in teaching and learning decisions? It's vital that students are involved in teaching and learning. Um, and I think it's vital that students have the understanding that they're responsible for their own learning. And She's making the abstract concrete. That's always a good thing to do in an interview. And they must have an, impact, an input and how that happens. Right, I think that's all the questions. Thank you very much. This is the moment of truth. I think this is going to be a difficult one for them. She's very, very engaging. First perception? Um, well, I thought she came across as being very confident, and I could see her in the role of being a head teacher. I, I felt that she had the right um, sort of aura of confidence and knowledge. Uh, Martin, what did you think? I, I, I liked her. She was, she was relaxed. I'm not too sure how she would deal with some of the more negative parts of the job. I don't think she would suit every headship. No. Well, she does seem reflective about her practice, yes. and that was very encouraging. So, in summary, um, we feel that she is quite convincing as a head teacher, um, but it would be not necessarily in all schools. I've heard the verdict of the panel. Now it's time to give Tracy my verdict. Tracy, how are you feeling? Relieved that it's over. <laughs> okay, right. it was quite an ordeal. What went well? I think that the questions were, were fair um, and I enjoyed answering a number of the questions actually. And, and, and that makes a great impression on people because that gives them a sense of confidence that you're confident as well. So, even what if a, you're not. <laughs> even if you're not, yeah. Okay. No leader is ever the finished article, but you're as close to the finished article as anyone can reasonably expect. Given that, what you might want to do is change the way you think about going to these panels. You're not a deputy head, you're already a head teacher. And when you think of being a head teacher, you'll act like a head teacher. And you'll also take on the perspectives of a head teacher. And at the end of it, you'll be one. Good luck. And I look forward to seeing you in your new school. Right. Well, I've taken away a lot of advice. Then I shall certainly listen to that. I've taken it on board. Um, and uh, I think now I'm uh, that step closer to making the application for headship. Mm -hmm.